How's it going guys? We've all seen the videos on YouTube of people raging on DBD saying insane over the top things in the post game screen like not alive yourself, threatening sexual assault or murder, and even threatening to shoot up a school. Saying anything like any of this crosses the line and I mean literally it's illegal. In the moment, it might seem like you're just trying to say some edgelordy type bullshit to make yourself feel better or make the other person feel worse. But in those few short moments, you may not only cause significant damage to another person, you might also ruin your own life entirely if what you said gets reported or taken seriously enough. That's why in this video we're going to be talking about gamer rage. More specifically, how to self-reflect to see if you might have an issue with it and also how to approach someone you may know who sometimes loses control. Dude, are you fucking- Rage attacks while gaming can be attributed to any game, but we're going to be using Dead by Daylight as a reference for this video. To start, when I was a teenager, I was extremely competitive, I raged hard while gaming, I broke controllers, cursed at people like a maniac, and foamed out the mouth on more than one occasion. <laughs> I was always aware that I had a pissy little rage problem, but somehow it always felt justified in the moment. And when someone tried to calm me down while I was being a pissy bitch, I would double down on being an even pissier bitch. Not quite Dr. Phil level, but pretty cringe and salty. How dare someone try to calm me down while I'm throwing a tantrum. On top of that, I somehow felt the need to like outdo my last rage attack. Yesterday's pissy fit only went to a 7, so today's would need to go to an 8, and tomorrow's would need to be a 9. This toxic cycle was turning me into a pretty shitty person who had less and less control of their emotions. By this time, I was getting into my later teens, and it was starting to get really embarrassing, so I decided to change. Some people are fortunate enough to have someone close to them that can pull them aside when they're being an idiot or crossing the line. I did not. Nobody had any clue on how to approach the issue in a productive way, so it was on me to fix it myself. If I started to get angry or feel any loss of control, I would quit playing immediately. Hashtag rage quitting is okay. But I wouldn't just keep playing. Think of it more as a rage stop than a rage quit. After quitting, I would quite literally go touch grass lift some weights, something physical or beneficial. At the end of the day, anger is energy, so if you can learn to channel that energy and turn it into something productive, the results can actually be pretty significant. What eventually ended up happening, which I didn't expect, was that I started to not get angry as much or as easily anymore. My tolerance and control over my emotions continuously improved through positive conditioning. Now, I was never at the point of having violent thoughts or anything like that, but if I had continued down that path and kept conditioning myself to have less and less control, it could have led to all kinds of destructive personality traits. The point is to be wary of yourself if you think you might have an anger issue, you're the only one who can truly help yourself. Remember, there's a difference between being self-aware or acknowledging the issue and actually taking action to address it. Also, if you know anyone who rages, my advice is to never approach them in any way while they're angry. It's pointless at best and counterproductive at worst. Wait till they're chilled out, then offer some ideas on ways they can channel their energy into something more beneficial for their health and future. Another thing to practice, especially in a game like DBD that is so horrifically unbalanced and full of egomaniacs, is to not put negative thoughts in other players' heads. Just because someone is abusing a terribly designed loop doesn't mean they're thinking that you're shit at the game. They might very well be thinking, God, what the hell were the devs smoking when they designed this? If you're getting tunneled or face camped, the killer probably isn't doing it because they hate you personally. The majority of time people are just playing, trying to have a good time and obviously win. Now I'm not exactly asking you to be purposely naive, 
there are of course a lot of assholes on DVD who are going out of their way to try to piss you off. Some will say it's strategic, which is usually bullshit, but at the same time, BMing is not exclusive to DVD or video games in general. I've seen BMing in every sport I've ever played. It's a little more cringe when someone with cheese it crumbs on their sweaty unwashed shirt is doing it over a video game that is in no way balanced for a comp scene, but that's besides the point. You are only responsible for yourself. If someone is acting like a douchebag, that's their problem, not yours. Their intention is to make you angry, upset, or distracted, so giving them what they want should be the last thing you want to do. People do mental gymnastics all the time to make themselves more angry, or justify the way they're feeling towards someone. However, anytime you suggest doing mental gymnastics in a positive way, then you are immediately accused of, well using mental gymnastics. For instance, if you're getting teabagged at the exit gate by a King V card, it can be very frustrating. But take a second to remember that if the player who's teabagging you had at any time during the match given you the opportunity, you would have literally murdered them in the game. And to be honest, it's quite lore friendly from a horror perspective for the main character to go crazy after surviving, so just keep that in mind. Now we're going to talk about groups, because it's pretty common for there to be a completely chill person who becomes toxic while playing with their toxic friends. It's easy to start off mildly toxic, saying things like GG easy or baby killer uninstall, etc. But fallacy or not, it's a slippery slope. And this is a hard one because you don't want to lose friends, nobody does, but you might find yourself hive minding when you're in their company. Or even if you don't take part in their toxicity, you may feel complacent with it. If your group told the killer to off themselves in the post game chat and everyone thought it was funny, what would you do? Be honest with yourself and assess the best course of action. Maybe next time your toxic friend group invites you to play, say, I kind of don't want to play that game because it seems like when we do, we always get angry and I end up feeling annoyed and frustrated afterwards. But if we all stay chill, I'll hop on and play. It's honest and you're not lying to your friends and it will start conditioning them to be less toxic as well if they want to keep playing with you. That about sums it up though. Not a crazy long video. I just wanted to put this out there for anyone who it might help and future situations where I can recommend it to anyone who's struggling with any type of anger issue. So my apologies for the more serious video this time, but thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.